week's lecture on economic welfare. I'm Mike Wenz, and I will be guiding you through the slides. Uh, economic welfare is a concept that's interested in trying to measure how much people gain from trading with each other. Uh, voluntary exchange between buyers and sellers, we know, it creates gains for both sides. I would rather, when I go buy a cup of coffee, I would rather have the cup of coffee than my $2. The store would rather have the $2 than, than the ingredients and materials and resources that went into making the, the, the cup of coffee. This is evidenced by the fact that this, this exchange happens. Uh, it gives rise to something that economists have, have referred to as the double thank you moment. I walk into Starbucks, I hand the clerk my $2. Uh, the, the clerk hands me a cup of coffee, I say thank you, the clerk says thank you. This reveals that we are both gaining from this exchange. Um, when you buy something, you're indicating that you would rather have the item than the money that went in to purchase it and the, the things that you would have spent the money on otherwise. So my $2 cup of coffee, I would rather have the cup of coffee than whatever else I could have bought with those $2. So uh, I'm, I'm revealing that by my purchase of the coffee. Conversely, the store says that, that they are revealing that they'd rather have my $2 than the resources that went into it, including their labor and the, the time of the entrepreneur and the, the, the rental rate for the space, that, that they can provide this cup of coffee for something less than $2 in terms of the opportunity cost of the resources that go into it. So both the, the buyer, I, and the seller, the Starbucks in this case, benefit from the fact that this transaction occurs. Now, Thinking about this from the consumer side, we'll start with our first definition. Most consumers don't pay a price as high as their marginal valuation. Recall that when we looked at a demand curve, the demand curve for consumers represents the willingness of each consumer to pay for a particular good or services. And note that most of those consumers, the, there's that big part of the demand curve that sits above the price. Most consumers pay a price that's something less than what they marginally value the good as. Uh, the difference between what I pay and what I would have paid is my net benefit. And this benefit is what we call consumer surplus. So if I'm willing to pay $10 for something, but I find out that I get it for five, I get $5 in consumer surplus. As one example of this, imagine when you go into the store to buy something, a box of cereal or whatever, and when you get there, instead of being $4, this week it's on sale for $3. I didn't even know that it was on sale for $3, but I went in there to buy it, willing to pay four. There's at least a dollar in, in consumer surplus that I generate uh, by paying a price lower than what I was willing to pay. This is called consumer surplus. Conversely, supply curves represent marginal opportunity costs. Supply curve, the height of a supply curve represents uh, what it would take for the seller to be willing to provide its resources in the production of this good. And by its resources, I mean the, the, the value of the labor that goes into it, the value of the space, the value of the natural resources that goes into it. Supply curves represent where sellers receive enough in price to provide this good and its underlying resources in this market. In other words, sellers bring all the, the inputs in production together, and if they can do it for less than the price they receive, then sellers are going, to be, uh, are, are going to be willing to do this. Now note that most sellers receive a price higher than their marginal opportunity cost. Sellers receive generally more money than it costs to, uh, to produce the item. The difference between the price that they receive and this cost of producing the item is the producer's surplus. So this is the gain to producers that, that, that comes about because a particular exchange happens. Now, graphically, I'll, I'll try and show you what we mean, and we can think about calculating consumer surplus. Calculating computer, consumer surplus uh, means arriving at a dollar amount. What's the dollar value of benefit that's created by uh, by this particular market existing. So stare at this, and, and in this particular market, we've got a demand curve sloping down, a supply curve sloping up, pretty standard stuff, an equilibrium price of $10, and an equilibrium quantity of 100 Now, these people up here on the demand curve all have a, a willingness to pay for this product that's higher than $10, right? The, starting up here at a price, a willingness to pay of $20, and moving all the way down along until we get to the 100th hundredth, uh, the hundredth consumer, with some willingness to pay that's above the equilibrium price, that's above the price that actually prevails in the market. Now, notice this triangle up here represents consumer surplus, represents the gain to consumers because this market exists. These are, this is the difference between how much I value the item and how much I actually have to pay. So somebody here uh, might value it at 15, have to pay 10, that consumer gets $5 in consumer surplus. And if we take this and add this up for all of the 100 consumers who buy this item, we can figure out the total value 
uh, the, the total value of consumer surplus or the total benefit that consumers obtain because this market exists. Conversely, on the producer side, we look at the supply curve and the, the difference between the height of the supply curve, which, which represents what it would take for producers to sell this good and the price they're actually able to charge is the benefit to consumers for producing each item. So this is the gains, the, producer, the consumer surplus is the gains for consumers because this market exists. This is the gain to producers that exists because, uh, because these transactions happen. So we can calculate these areas. These are just areas in the triangle. And, and so for consumer surplus, half of the base of the triangle is 100. The height of the triangle is this 20 minus 10. Half base times height. One half of 10 is the height times 100. It's 1,000 times a half. We get consumer surplus equal to $500. On the producer side, again, half of the base times the height. The base is 100. The height is 10 minus 4. Right? 4 is what it takes to bring the first seller into the market. <clears throat> Gives us producer surplus equal to $300. So uh, in, the, in total, this market creates $800 in value, in, in net economic benefit. Because this market exists, there is uh, a gain, gains from trade equal to $800 for uh, consumers and producers in this market. Combined.